Good morning, friends, and welcome to the Whole Hand Hangout. What's a Whole Hand Hangout? Well, when you are this many, one, two, three, four, that means you are old enough to go to pre-K, a magical place to be where you get ready to go to kindergarten. During pre-K, you have your fifth, one, two, three, four, five, your fifth birthday. And then you are a whole hand. So when somebody says, how old are you? You get to say five. You don't have to hold any fingers back or hide any fingers. You're just a whole hand, you're five. So in our whole hand hangout, we're talking to our four and five year olds and I have three super friends who are so excited to meet you. My name is Miss Green and my three friends are Loopy and Natty and Ruckus. Loopy is going to talk to us about letters and Natty is going to talk to us about numbers and then Ruckus, oh, Ruckus loves a read aloud. He's going to read us a story. So to get started, Let's get all of our wiggles out and make sure that we are ready to look and listen and learn, okay? So show me, I wiggle my fingers, I wiggle my toes. Maybe your toes are in socks or they're in your shoes. I wiggle my shoulders, I wiggle my nose. I wiggle, wiggle, wiggle till there are no more wiggles left in me and I'm as still as still can be. Learners look with eyes and listen with ears and think with their minds. Now you're not thinking about what you're gonna have for dinner tonight. You're thinking about what Miss Green and Miss Green's friends are saying. Are you ready? I have someone who's very excited to meet you. He might be a little shy at first. I don't know, oh, don't be shy. They look very friendly to me. This is Loopy. Can you guys say hi? You say hi to Loopy. Hi, oh, he's been so excited. Loopy loves letters. He just loves letters. And he knows that if you learn each of your letters and the sound that the letter makes, you can learn how to put them together and make words and read and write and all of those amazing and exciting things that we learn to do when we go to school. So Loopy, has some things he wants to teach you about a letter. Now, remember we said we're thinking with our brains. We stay mindful. That means I keep my mind on what I'm talking about, what I'm hearing. So we're gonna be mindful of our learning target. That is what we want to make sure we can do at the end of our lesson with Loopy. Now, our learning target with Loopy is I can name the letter and say it's sound. So, we're gonna show you a letter and just like you have a name, just like Loopy has a name, the letter has a name. So we will show you a letter and you need to know it as soon as you see it. As soon as you see me, you say, ah, oh, that's Miss Green. When you see him, you say, ah, oh, that's Loopy. You're gonna do the same thing with this letter. You're gonna say his name as soon as you see him. I wonder, there are 26 letters, you know. I wonder which one Loopy chose for today. What you got for us, Loopy? Aha. Uh -huh. So we have an I here. Do you think that thinks that's probably because we're supposed to look, right? We're supposed to look at the letter first. So there's an uppercase H and a lowercase H. H. So the name of this letter is H. Let's hear, let's hear you say it. Yeah, letter H. When I'm learning a new letter, the next thing I look at is what do I need to form that letter? What do I need to know to make sure I can write him correctly? When I'm looking at H, now, Loopy, when you do that, my friends can't see. I need you to stay up here so they can see. They need to see the H. You already know the H. When I look at my H, I see it has some straight down lines. So I'm going to need straight down lines to make my letter H. When I'm looking very, very closely, I see a straight across line 
to help me make my letter H. A straight across. I don't see any diagonals and I don't see any left ear curves or right ear curves. I don't see any smile curves. Oh, but hmm, uppercase H only has these straight lines. Straight downs and straight acrosses. Lowercase H has a curve. He has my frown curve. So to make him, I need a straight down and a frown curve. What would that sound like? What would I say with my mouth to write these letters? I want you to get your magic finger right now and choose your color. I think I'll use purple. Are you ready? Starting point, straight down. Starting point, straight down. Starting point, straight across. And you've made an H. It was that easy. Let's see you do it. Starting point, straight down. Starting point, straight down. Starting point, straight across. Right in the middle. Awesome job, guys. Now, there's a word that we say when we make lowercase h, and it's the word trace. And when I trace, what that means is I've drawn a line and I'm going to write on top of the line that I've already drawn. This is what it looks like. For lowercase h, I go straight down, I trace up and frown. Straight down, trace up and frown. Now, you try, you can switch colors if you'd like. I'm gonna stick with purple. Straight down, trace up, and frown. Straight down, trace up, and frown. Awesome, those look great. You can erase, you can erase. Now, the next thing I need to know about a letter is what sound does he make? What sound does this mean when I'm writing words and reading words? Do you think they already know? Tell us what you think it says. <gasps> Beautiful job. He says, <sighs> when I make the sound that the letter H makes, my mouth is open, but I'm not using my voice at all. <sighs> letter H is just my breath. <sighs> He's a breath sound. <sighs> That's what he says. Words that start with the letter H. I wonder if you can think of one. Is there somebody in your house that you can tell them a word you think starts with H? If your mouth, if you fix your mouth to go when you say the word, then it starts with an H. Let's see which one's Luffy picked up. Hmm, aha, I think Luffy's hungry. Hungry, that starts with an H. Luffy picked hamburger. Hamburger. Let's see if he's right. Here it is. That's the word. Hamburger. Does it start with an H? Yes, it does. Good job, Loopy. Oh, he's so proud of himself. Great work, Loopy. Hamburger starts with H. What else do you have? Oh, Loopy went to the zoo and he saw this animal. He was very excited about seeing that animal. A hippopotamus, you say it, hippopotamus. Mm, let's see if he's right. I think he is because my mouth goes when I say hippopotamus. Yep, he's right, there it is, hippopotamus, hippopotamus. So these are the things that Loopy knows it's important for you to know. When you're learning a new letter, look at it very, very closely. Decide if it has straight downs, straight acrosses, diagonals, or curves. Practice writing the letter. Practice making the sound. And think of words that start with that letter, like hamburger and hippopotamus. Now let's go back. Remember, we're mindful of what we're working on. Let's look at our learning target. I can name the letter and say its sound. What was his name? Yes, 
He said H. And what was his sound? <sighs> Sounds like you've all been running. Yes, beautiful job. All right, Loopy, tell our whole hand friends goodbye, and we will see Loopy again tomorrow. Now, let's get ready to meet a new friend. My friend, Natty. Can't wait to meet you. Now, she is nuts about numbers. This is Natty, and she's just nuts about numbers. She couldn't wait to get here today to teach you about a number. Now, am I going to be saying something like H or S or Z? No, those are letters, not numbers. We're talking about numbers with Natty, and Natty, just like our friend Loopy with our letters, Natty has a target that we need to hit. We need to know what we're talking about, what we're supposed to be learning, so we can make sure that we did our learning really well. And with Natty, our learning target is I can name the number and show it in many ways. I can name the number and show it in many ways. What letter have you chosen? Or what number have you chosen for us today, Natty? What do you think? Wonder. It could be 12, it could be three. Could be. <gasps> Natty chose. Oh, I heard you. Five. Natty chose the whole hand number. Of course she did. Great choice, Natty. Five is our whole hand number. Here is one way I can show the number five with a numeral. Numeral. Can you say that word? Numeral. Yeah. Usually we just hear the word number, right? So numeral is just a fancy way of saying what we call the symbol for a number. I can also show the number five as a word. When I say five, my mouth gets ready. That's an F sound. The word five are, would be the letters F-I-V-E. Five. I can show five on a 10 frame. You guys ever seen one of these? My friends and I in my classroom, we do a 10 frame every day. It's called a 10 frame because it has 10 little frames. It looks like 10 little picture frames. One, two, three, four, five on the top, and one, two, three, four, five on the bottom. And it can teach me so many amazing things. One thing it can teach me is another way to show a number. So, Natty, if we're going to show five on a 10 frame, we need some counters. Now, Natty will have to be very careful because we have to put exactly the right number of counters, not too few and not too many. So, you can count along with us. Mm -hmm. One, that's one counter. And of course, I started on the left and I started on the top because we always go top to bottom, left to right. When we read and when we write, top to bottom, left to right. Two, I know that you guys are doing such a good job. Natty's very impressed. Three, one, two, three. Is that enough? No, so silly. Four, five, that's it. That's five on a 10 frame. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I know you can show me five with your fingers. If you're still this many, this one's coming. This birthday's coming soon. Or you might have had your whole hen birthday already. I can show five on my fingers. I get to show my whole hand. Another way I can show five is on dice. When I'm rolling dice, if this is what I see, with a dot in each corner, and a dot in the middle, that's five. That's five on dice. Another way I can show the number five is on a number line. The numbers always stay in order. Five doesn't wake up one morning and say, hey, I think I'll get behind the three today. Nope. One, two, three, four, five. There he is. He comes after the four. He comes in front of the six. That's our number five. Let's go back and review. Natty wants to make sure you were listening, looking, listening, and thinking, and you have all this. 
Yes, he's a five. Five on a 10 frame. Five with fingers, five with dice, five on a number line. You can show us five with your body. Yeah, how about jumps? Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. Great job, guys. Natty was so happy to see you, and he will see you again tomorrow when you tune in for another Nuts About Numbers with Natty. Now, the next friend that I have to introduce to you wants to tell you a whole hand about books. A whole hand about books. Books have a cover. All books have a cover. All books have a spine. Books have a title. Just like you have a name, the name of a book is the title. All books have authors. Authors are the ones who write the words. And some books have illustrators. Illustrators either take pictures with a camera or they draw pictures or paint pictures, or use other kinds of art media to make beautiful books for us to look at and read. This is my friend Ruckus, and Ruckus, oh, he's always ready to read a book. And the book that Ruckus has chosen for us today, here are its parts, the cover, the spine. The author of today's book is Jan Brett. That means Jan Brett wrote the words in this book. And do you know what? She's super talented. She also is the illustrator. She did the words and the pictures. Isn't that amazing? I see snow and I see animals. I love snow and animals. So I bet this is an awesome book. Be Mitten. Are you ready to be good, good, good listeners? All right, looking with your eyes, listening with your ears. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool, white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, didn't want to make white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, it will be too hard to find it. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens, and finally, Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first, I will make sure you are safe and sound. Then, I will check to see, if, to see if you still have your mittens. So, off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Oh, Nikki. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by, and he stopped for a moment to admire the, his own winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was enough room, but then he saw the rabbit's big kickers, and he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided he would move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by all the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw his glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Up through the snow appeared the badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air and a fox trotted by. He stopped to investigate. Just the sight of that cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave him lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. 
He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as can be, but what animal is going to argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched it, pulled and bulged to many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, 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 choo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the air and the animals scattered in all directions. On his way home, Mickey saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. And then she saw that he had both his mittens. The end. I think this story says, this picture says a lot without even words. Baba's looking because one mitten is very big and the other mitten is the normal size. Do you think that Baba could ever guess what happened to the mitten that day? Do you think she would believe that that many animals crowded inside just to stay warm? Good knitting, Baba. She must have done her very, very best to make sure that mitten could hold fast. Oh, friends, I'm so excited that you got to spend some time with me today. Natty and Loopy and Ruckus are so happy to be your new friends, and we can't wait to see you again tomorrow and the day after. Let's say goodbye. Hold hands up. Hold hands down. Whole hands wiggle all around. Whole hands counting. Whole hands snap. Whole hands rest. And that's a wrap. I can't wait to see you again tomorrow for another whole hand hangout. Bye. Mr. Middlebrooks. I teach at Calvin Donaldson Elementary School every day to students that are just like you and I'm super excited to sing and learn and today even dance with you. So what I need you to do is stand up please. Can you stand up? This is a brain break. We've been learning. Let's stand up now. I'm gonna sing a song. Can you help me by following me? You follow me, do what I do, and we'll have fun. Here we go, looby loo. Here we go, looby light. Here we go, looby loo. All on a Saturday night. You put your right hand in. You take your right hand out. You give yourself a shake, 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 and turn yourself around. Oh, here we go, looby loo. Here we go, looby light. Here we go, looby loo. All on a Saturday night. You put your left hand in. You take your left hand out. You give yourself a shake, 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 and turn yourself around. Oh, here we go, looby loo. Here we go, looby light. Here we go, looby loo. All on a Saturday night, you put your right foot in. Then you take your right foot out. You give yourself a shake, 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 and turn yourself around. Oh, here we go, looby loo. Here we go, looby light. Here we go, looby loo. All on a Saturday night. 
You put your left foot in, then you take your left foot out. You give yourself a shake, 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 and turn yourself around. Oh, here we go, Luby Loo. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Loo. On a Saturday night, you put both elbows in. You take both elbows out. You give yourself a shake, 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 and turn yourself around. Oh, here we go, Luby Loo. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Loo. All on a Saturday night, you put your head in. You take your head out. You give yourself a shake, 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 and turn yourself about. Oh, here we go, Luby Loo. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Loo. All on a Saturday night, you put your whole body in. Then you take your whole body out. You give yourself a shake, 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 and turn yourself around. Oh, here we go, Luby Loo. Here we go, Luby Light. Here we go, Luby Loo. All on a Saturday night. Now, that was fun, and you guys looked really crazy doing it, but it was so much fun. Can you sing Loo, Loo, Loo? Sing Loo, Loo, Loo. Loo, 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 Loo. Loo, 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 Loo. Great job! Thanks so much for singing and dancing and playing with me today. My name is Mr. Middlebrooks, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye now.